Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you the importance of learning good shouldering techniques. Now, I'm doing this with a fairly short piece of material. Uh, you can do this with a longer piece of material, which is advisable, but it's good practice to learn how to manipulate short pieces of material like this on your anvil and still be able to pull off this technique. Now this piece is four inches long, three eighths inch thick, by one inch wide, and that works out to 9.5 mil, or roughly 10 mil thick, by 25 mil wide, by 100 mil long, for those of you that are across the pond. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw these in a pair of tongs here real quick, and we're gonna, I'm gonna show you the process of shouldering. Now, I'm gonna be doing this in almost real time, so I'll be back in just a second once this is up to heat, and then I will show you this kind of this quick little technique that you can use of creating a boss in the center of a bar and explain a little bit of what this is good for and why. Uh, this will come in handy, this little bit of knowledge, for more advanced level projects that I will be pursuing here in the near future, not too distant future. So be on the lookout for those and see if you can spot where I use this technique in some of my upcoming videos. So, Without further ado, I'll be right back with you as soon as this is hot. Okay, so we have this good and hot now. And one of the tricks that we're going to, first trick that you need for good shouldering, whenever you're trying to make a boss like this, you need a really nice high heat. Then we're going to take this piece and we're going to set about an inch and a half onto the anvil and we're gonna hit at a slight diagonal angle as you see here. Hopefully you guys can see how that's shaping up. That is going to start our boss. and we're gonna work this material down to roughly half of the parent bar thickness. So half inch or 12 and a half mil, roughly in there, about 12 mil. We're gonna take and work this down to half, this leg of it. Then we're gonna flip it around and we are going to work the other side down at the same ratio, leaving approximately about an inch in between them. And I say approximate because it might be a little over an inch and that's okay for this demonstration purposes. If you want to make it more accurate than that, uh, it would be good if you mark out, pre-mark out. I didn't do any layout marks, so we're just going to run with it. And I'll get to the point here in a second on why we're doing all this in the first place. Again, drawing down to half the parent bar thickness, or 12 mil, so that's half inch from one inch, and we're keeping it in plane, which is 3 eighths of an inch, or 9 mil. So we're going to keep that in plane as we go along here. So go ahead and get this hot again, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so we've got a really nice heat on this again. This is almost clear up to a welding heat. We are going to lay it flat on the anvil, and we're going to draw this piece out now. We're going to draw this out, like I said, to approximately half inch or 12.5 mil by 9 mil. So half inch by 3 eighths. And I'm going to go ahead and knock the corners off of this just a little bit. The rest will have its corners knocked off in a little while afterwards. And all this is is just superficial cleanup work. So there we go. We have half the parent bar thickness and just a little over half, I think that one was, but it's okay. You guys get the ideal. And we drew it out to the original parent bar thickness in the other plane. So 3 eighths by half 
or 9.5 mil by 12 mil. So now we're gonna flip this around and we're gonna do the other side. And we're gonna leave about an inch sticking out the back side here on the back side towards me or just a little over an inch and we're gonna drive this down and draw this leg out. And we'll do that now. Be right back with you. We got the other end really heated up to a welding heat nearly. We're gonna set again, roughly a little more than an inch or so. Onto the end, we're gonna leave it roughly a little more than an inch. And draw that thing down to thickness as well. Again, this is just practice, so don't chastise yourself too much. Say if this leg is longer than this leg. If you make it, if you're trying to do, if you're trying to do this for the project that we'll be using this for, you'll want to have accurate layout marks. But now you guys can see this boss here. So I'm going to draw this out one more heat, and we'll go on to the next step. Now, I was first introduced to this by Tom Latine. We use this in lock work for uh, slide bolts on uh, a door lock, like a 15th century style door lock. Now, that is a, it's a real handy tool and it was almost magic for me. It was magical. I was like, what? Whenever I saw this actually take place and happen, I thought it was the neatest thing that you could ever imagine looking at it that way. But, uh, you know, looking in boyish wonder, basically. It was, it was an epiphany moment, if you will. Now, again, this technique can be used on the end of a bar. It can be used in the mid bar. It can be used at standalone for a project. It can be used to add a decorative element to something. And it can be used in a mechanical way like in the event of like a lock. So we'll pull this out now. We'll draw this back down. Just aiming for the same thickness, parent bar thickness. And roughly about the same dimensions as the other leg. I had a lot of drawing to do on this one. Anyways, good enough for this demonstration. Knock those corners off. Clean everything up. Okay, and now we'll move on to the next part. So now in the next part, what we're going to do is we're actually going to bend these out away from this center boss because we need to gain access to this center boss area. And you'll see why in just a second. Let's go ahead and we'll start with a short leg first. That should be a little easier to bend and then we'll cool that off, flip it around and do the much larger leg. Okay, now that we've got a good, nice localized heat on that end, we're getting a little bit of should be paying closer attention. Got a little burning on that leg there. We're gonna bend this leg away. The ideal here is not to hit it against the anvil. We just wanna take and bend it away so we can get access to this right here. We wanna be able to come in here and hit this. So we've gotta be able to gain a little bit of access there. So that's what we've done in that heat. We'll go ahead and scratch that there. 
You don't have to go crazy with this spin. It's just helpful if it's mostly out of the way. So we'll go ahead and get that brushed up. Get a little excess scale off there. Flip this whole thing around and we will do that exact same thing to the other side. Okay, gripping it again. We're gonna try to bend it again right at that angle. Just to get this out of the way is the ideal here. It may take you several tries to get this bent out of the way. And you may also have to just try a different approach by hitting on the boss itself. Again, the ideal is just to get it moved out of the way. So this way we can hit that boss. So I highly advise you, if you're going to be following along in the future for future projects, that you take this video to heart and you practice it in your home forge. You'll find that this right here can be a very handy form. Um, so next step, we're going to get this boss nice and hot. Now that we've got our two ends up out of the way, we're going to put it in the fire like so. And then when we come out, we are going to take and forge this boss out. And that's going, to be the, that's going to be the trickiest part of this whole process, but I believe we can do it. Okay, so now that we have this up to temperature, we're going to grab it in our pair of tongs here by one of the legs. We're going to bring it out to the anvil. And again, you want this heat to be a fairly high heat. And we're going to just start driving that mass down. And it's going to feel tricky at first, but just stick with it. Rotate it over, try to get a good aim at it. If you have, if you feel the need to use like a guillotine tool, you can practice that. It's nice if you can learn to do this at the anvil though. It helps improve your accuracy as a smith. If you can do this at the anvil and drive this material down. As you can see, it's a pretty tough thing to do, but it's not impossible to do it. So we're gonna have to, so you're gonna have to work this joint back and forth a little bit when you do this. That's okay. We're just trying to take and drive that mass of material out. Now, if you'll notice, one of the things it's wanting to do is it's wanting to fish lip. So you will have to go over a block or the tail of your anvil and take out that fish lipping. You don't want that to go too far, otherwise you'll end up with a cold shut on the end of the bar. Now, before you guys think that this is an easy process, or somebody thinks, oh, that's not too difficult. Or, hey, why am I watching this video? This is wasting like 20 minutes of my life. I would challenge you to try it. It's a lot more difficult than you think, and it takes quite a bit more effort uh, to learn this technique. But once you can do it, again, it makes you look like that much more of a wizard at the forge. So we'll get this nice, good, and hot. A nice bright heat again. I'm going to go over the tail of my anvil, so it'll probably be just a little bit out of focus, a fuzz out of focus. If you don't have a square tail on your anvil, you can go to the horn of the anvil and do it over that, or a nice radius block. Taking into consideration the legs, you can do that. You know what, I might actually do it on this one there. That might be good. I'll do it on that instead. Again, we're not trying to shoulder the backside, we're just trying to drive those pieces down. Those little ears, the little fish lips there. Grab it with another pair of tongs here. And we're going to drive those down. Do kind of a thinning out of that tab of sorts. 
because since I'm going to be compressing it more, it's going to thicken back up to the original parent bar thickness as I forge this down more. And again, one of the hardest parts of doing this is gripping this sucker. It's going to try your patience because it's just going to want to slip because there's not a lot on the anvil here. But you guys can see that I'm starting to pull more material there, more than one inch wide of material. Okay, another good solid heat on this. Again, aiming, trying to keep your shoulders tight, continue to drive this material out. It's gonna fish lip on you. Go over your block. Take the fish lip out, adjust that down, and continue to drive out this material. You guys can see how that's working. Okay, now that I've got this piece down some more, drawn down, I'm going to set it up here on the anvil. I'm going to reestablish those shoulders a lot closer and try to get in here again. Back to the rear the parent bar thickness or what is now the new established parent bar thickness. Now we can flip this around and we can do that to the other side with the next heat. Nice and hot like we want to reestablish that shouldering there. We want to reestablish that shouldering there. So we'll heat that back up. Okay, so we got this good and hot again here at the 90. We're going to straighten this thing out. Well, it'll give us our reach back, our access to squaring up that corner. We'll pull this back a little bit. Aim, hopefully not getting in there too deep with that. Sometimes you can use the hardy hole if it's still one inch or so. Now all that is is me playing with it to dress that thing up. Now you can see that there's still a little bit of slope here into the inside corners of this piece. That's fine, that can be rasped off uh, to get it perfectly square in here, but sometimes it's nice to have that ramping effect in the final piece. Uh, it just depends on how good of a job you did at forging this down. Now, you may be saying, Roy, all that work for just that. But the point of this whole video, and so I'm not accused of wasting anybody's time or life expectancy here, the point of this whole video is if, if you look at this piece of material, one, it grew wider than the inch that we began with, and two, it has given us a piece now that is almost indistinguishable of what it originally came out to. Now, this piece here could bend completely down and get upsetted, and then we would have this weird upset square corner with this extra block on top that we can do things with. You say, well, why is that important? Well, if you ever want to build a door knocker someday and you don't want to have to braze on or solder on some sort of block or somehow tenon on the block that swings in the hasp of the door knock or the clevis of the door knocker, that is how you produce that in one solid forged piece. So again, it's a very handy thing. Uh, 
Say you want to do lock work and you're needing to establish a bolt or something that catches right the slide or slides the bolt. This now could very easily become a bolt and when the key gets rotated around it slides the bolt and when it goes around the other side it slides the bolt. So now this one piece here, although it does not look like it would be that complex, although there's a million other ways that you could have went about doing this, this one piece now can become a slide bolt for a lock. It could become, again, a different piece for a door knocker and a whole host of other things. One of the other things that you could do with this, if you're ambitious enough, is to find out what proportions of material you need in mass and draw out this center block, leave it wide enough at first, uh, get a wider piece than what I started with here, and draw this out into a third leg, and then you bend these, and boom, you've got a tripod. Without any forge welding, without any rivet work, without any welds in the center, you have created a solid one-piece tripod or trivet then. So again, this technique has a lot of uses and it takes what was just a simple piece of steel that was 3 8 inch thick by 1 inch wide by 4 inches long and turns it into this monstrosity, this contraption. So again, I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you didn't, oh well, I'm sorry about that. But uh, I hope you check out some of the other videos on the channel anyhow and uh, see what they are all about. I've got plenty of different videos. We have went well over a thousand videos on the channel to help you and your blacksmithing uh, endeavors. And if you'd like to support what Jessica and I do on this channel to take and help other blacksmiths learn the craft of blacksmithing, I suggest that you go check out our website, blacksmithpdfs.com. A link for that will be down in the description down below. And as always, God bless you all, and we'll catch you on the next one. And before you go, Remember, this will be part of a future project that you may just want to make.